Inside the room here is an Alex loop. I've got my KX3 here and it's receiving. I have this loop tuned to, tuned to 14 at 074. It's got a very particular resonance here. And while we're talking here, it's kind of hard to see on that screen, but um, all the green on the left are people calling CQ. Okay, the people on the right are on the frequency that I happen to be on or close to it. So, sorry Roger. That's all right. Um, I don't know if you can see, but it says receive 686 hertz here. And everybody here is 690, 691, so 681, so you know within 10, 15 hertz or so. So that's on my specific receive frequency. But this is this is everybody. So CQDX W2, I can hardly read that DAN. I'm just, IAN rather. It's calling CQ CQ AI4 EY, um, and the timings are all like 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So I think my time is pretty good. I'm agreeing with most everybody out there. Um, the lines here, the, the dotted lines are 15 minute segments. And normally you have a whole bunch, but with the loop inside the room here, I'm happy that I'm getting anybody. I mean, think about, the, I'm receiving it probably worse now with the blinds closed. <laughs> Those are metal blinds too. And I'm receiving guys in here. In, so um, I don't think we can make a QSO in here, but if I wanted to do that, I can go to the spectral display at the top and, and say, let's, let's, well, it's all clear, but um, I can move my, see the red line move up at the top there? The red line and the green line are now different. The red line's over there and the green line's over there. And those will be reflected by the numbers down here down the bottom. Right? Now, if I wanted to call CQ, by the way, um, before I do that, I can, I can click erase and wipe out the right side. If I double click erase, it will wipe out the whole thing. That's useful when I'm changing bands. I just want to start fresh. And on the right side, after every QSO, I always erase it because um, I'm a little uh, ADD sometimes where uh, sometimes 15 seconds waiting there is fine. But I, I got my little workshop next to my rig there, and I'll be doing some stuff, usually for QRP works. And I just glance at the screen, and if I see any red there, that means somebody answered my CQ. So uh, I like to start with a blank screen, so if anything shows up on there, I know uh, I got somebody. I caught a fish. Right? So if I want to call CQ, um, let's talk about these messages. Over here, the bottom one is CQ. It's automatically generated based on my call and my grid that I put it on the setting screen. This <coughs> column here of these radio buttons, uh, these, are, these are program radio buttons, not radio radio buttons. Um, this says, this is the next, this is next, the next thing to be done. This, these are buttons here that you can click that says, um, I want to send it now. So basically it says, finish what you're doing, and then the next thing you do is send this message if you want to do that. This one says, interrupt what you're doing and send this message right now. So I would do that, let's say I, uh, software automatically answered somebody. He said, no, no, I want somebody else. I'd say, no, no, right now, I want you to do that. So uh, here, I'm at CQ, and what I'm going to do is click the enable button there. And it's going to turn red. Enable. Uh, Right? And it automatically put CQ, KF3, or up there. Alright, I'm actually transmitting 10 watts right now. From this <coughs> I assume the RF safety guidelines are okay. Uh, I'll find out when I get home and look it up. But I'm going to call CQ, it's going to call CQ forever. Because uh, I don't think I'm going to get anybody in the room here. But if I did, a station would show on the left and the right that, that um, I called, that could show up in red with my call on it and their call. And then I don't have to do it. Okay. One of the things I have here is hold transmit frequency. If I would if I were to click on this guy to answer his CQ, <coughs> maybe I'll try that. Um, if I didn't have that box checked, my transmit, my red thing on top there, would automatically go to him and be on his frequency. But I have that box checked which says just leave the transmit where it is. Just sleep where it is. So that's why I pick a clear frequency and just stay there. And that's a better way to operate, I find. And this is where you select whether you want to 
go on the uh, minute, the zero, zero, it's checked, so it'll do that, transmit even first. Or if it's not checked, it'll transmit 15, and four, 15 seconds after and 45 seconds after. So it's going to call CQ forever until the watchdog timer times out. If I want to answer one of these guys, I'm going to erase that. So it brings his CQ over to the right, and then I have, I just double clicked on his call on the left there where the, you can see where the mouse pointer is, and it's going to respond to him. That he called a little while ago, he's not new, that he's, he's three cycles, so I'm not sure. Oh, actually, he's in QSO with somebody. So I'm going to stop this. So AI4UI called CQ, evidently KB7AK responded to him. So AI4UI sent him, KB7AK, this is AI4UI, you're minus 10. And then we're not copying KB7AK. We're only copying him, so the next thing he sent was RRR, and the next thing he sent was 73. So he's now finished with that Q cell. And you can see that on the right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes, you can see that on the right, the 73. So if I enable this, and see he called CQ again. I just have to enable it. I'm going to answer him. It'll, see this? Thanks, Joe. Uh, Excellent. It'll be uh, somewhat of a miracle to get them with this <coughs> set up like this, but I'm happy we're receiving them. And, and we're receiving him at um, minus 16 dB. So I can't imagine what he's receiving us at with this antenna in here. Right. He might be have a have a hundred watts of a hundred foot tower, and I'm getting him at minus 16 with the antenna in here. So I'm only putting out 10 watts. I, I so. You see I called him twice, you see the two yellow lines there? And I'm going to keep calling him until that bum answers me. <laughs> well, the watchdog time the time's out. Can you look at the PK info and see how much you're, what you're... Oh yeah, I could do that. Um, I'll bet you there's nobody. Okay, um, let's see what you're... <coughs> but yes, I can do that. So if I go here, and I, I go here, so you can go grocery shopping and work all states. Yes. <laughs> well, except it automatically stops you. There's this, I saw something that says that somebody came up with something that uh, uh, alleviates that and can continue to go, but that's no fun. Yeah. All right, so this is live. And I'm going to say on 20 meters, so signals sent by. KF zero U R on you know they're all the most sideband is there. I don't know how that works. In the last first for fifteen minutes. <coughs> and the fact that it isn't showing me any signals that are mine means it's not getting anybody. All right, and I whoops. What did I do there? But that's the whole world, and um, that doesn't mean that nobody can hear me. It just means nobody is hearing me that's reporting. Uh, for instance, uh, I got a call from Japan the other day, and he's not on the screen. He's not on the screen, but he's not reporting. But the coolest thing is, with my bad antennas, um, I've talked to Indonesia a couple of times on 30 meters, which I never heard Indonesia on 30 meters. I heard anybody on 30 meters. Uh, they get on 10 meters these days. 10 is absolutely dead. The South Americans are coming in, um, and 15 and 17. So during the day, I'm on everything from 10 through 30. Uh, late afternoon, I'll get on 40. At night, I can get on 80. I haven't tried 160. I haven't tried 6 yet either. But, um, but it's, it's very, very cool.